What is happening everybody? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the channel. Today is the day we're gonna get back to work on the TDI swapped four-door Tacoma. For those of you that are new, it's a 2000, I think it's a 2004 four-door Tacoma. It's a first gen. We're doing a BHW swap. I already have done the five-speed swap and the four-wheel drive swap. It was a pre-runner, so pretty much swapping everything in that truck. It is running and driving really good, but we still have a lot more work to do on the truck. Since I was working on that Suzuki mini truck, it has been sitting out behind the shop just collecting snow. It is buried under like a foot of snow. So we gotta get out there, get this thing unburied, I want to go for a quick little rip down the road, make sure it still runs. Plus, I haven't driven it for a while. So kind of excited to go bring it for a little rip. Anyway, let's go shovel it out, get it out, make sure things still runs. And then we'll get it in the shop, thaw it out. And we got a few things to do to it today. All right, the moment of truth. I'm going to cycle these glow plugs a couple times. And she should fire right up. At least I hope so. So my glow plug light is that uh, overdrive off, which looks like it barely even cycled, unless that can two dash is still messed up. Oh, there it is, a little bit longer. One more time, and she should fire. Whoa, battery's dead. Well, we're alive with the uh, help of a jump start. That little jumper box I had was dead and that didn't work, but we are running. Let's let this thing warm up and go for a little rip. driving this thing it is so quiet in here so smooth this thing is like a comfortable comfortable daily driver i cannot wait to get it finished up and start actually daily driving this thing also one other thing is building like 23 maybe 24 pounds of boost i am talking to malone we're gonna bump that up to like 30 or 32 and this thing should run a lot better on 30 32 pounds but even right now on wet it's not even snowy right here but wet pavement second gear is useless it just spins third gear doesn't really spin on 30 or 32 pounds probably third gear will break them loose as well
right, we made it back home. This thing is running amazing. So a couple things I wanna do right off the bat today is get this interior back together. We don't really need it tore apart. Really the last thing we gotta figure out with anything with involved with this interior is this Cantu dash. As far as the tack goes, I still haven't heard back um, anything resolving that issue. So I think I'm just gonna tuck it up for now, just up in here and out of the way. If I do need to pull that back out, it's super simple to pull that glove box out. So that is not a big deal. So that's one thing I wanna do. And the next is, if you guys remember, I mentioned something about redoing all my battery cables, or at least the positive. You can see I got one, two, three, four cables going to the positive. So this is the main, the big one's the main starter power wire. And then this one goes over to this other fuse box over here, or it powers the fuse box through an 80 amp fuse back there. So instead of having two wires running all the way to the other side of the engine bay, I believe I bought a, let's go look actually, I think it's a, a double aught uh, battery cable here, or it's a single aught, one dash O. So that is plenty, plenty of power for the starter and that other fuse. So what I'm gonna do, run that one cable over to the starter, and then I'm gonna piggyback another cable from the starter up to that fuse. I'll probably just cut this cable down and use that one. And I think that'll work a lot better. Also, what I got is this big distribution box, this bus bar. So I'm gonna mount this probably, I was gonna kinda put it down here, right there, but I don't know, either I'm either gonna put it right there or build a mount and put it right here. I kind of like this idea right here better, but we'll figure that out. The reason I want to run this is I can run one cable from the battery to this and power this whole bus bar, and then I can run all these other wires to it. If I do run an amp or anything else in the truck, I can just hook my power right up to here instead of cluttering up the positive post. So that's the reason I bought that bus bar. So let's start with the cables. I wanna get this all figured out and then we'll throw the interior back together. So let's tear us apart, get these cables out, figure out a mount for that, figure out where I wanna mount it and get these cables situated.
Well, there she be, guys. We got this thing all done. Battery cables, much cleaner looking, and I got pretty much unlimited power. This is actually a 300 amp bus bar. So like I said, if I ever need to add anything else, or if I decide to do a sound system with an amp, I can hook my power right up to here, and I'm always gonna have just two cables here. So this cleaned it up a ton. So next on the agenda, let's get this interior back together. All right, we are back together, back in one piece. So interior is looking good. I do want to do a few things in the interior, probably not right now, but I want to do definitely a nice touchscreen head unit. If you look at that steering wheel, you can see that thing is a little bit bent. So I, I kind of want to do the, I think it's a Camry or a Corolla. It's a three spoke steering wheel. It actually looks really good in these and apparently is plug and play with the airbag and everything. So I'm going to look into that maybe pick up one of those steering wheels. Definitely want to get some nice weather tech uh, floor mats. And I kind of want to fix this before it gets too bad. I'm going to probably hit up an upholstery shop and see if I can drop that seat off. Just because once it starts wearing through the actual seat cover, it starts wearing into the foam. And then you pretty much have to have it completely rebuilt. And it costs a lot more than to just have this replace probably just replaces bottom section here and would be done with it well guys we got to figure out a game plan for this truck like i said in the winter when it's cold out i just have a pellet stove in the shop and it's hard to keep it like 70 degrees for paint and i do need to get to work on paint so Got to figure out what we're doing there. What I might do before I get started painting it is bring it into town to a paintless dent repair guy. And there's a big dent in the, in the roof, that big dent up front. That is actually uh, the original green hood. Something happened with the latch. They were going down the highway and the hood folded up and smacked that. So I'll probably end up painting the whole roof anyway, but I want to drop the truck off, have that pulled out. There's a ding right there, a ding right there and pretty decent one right here in the fender um, other than that this side isn't too bad maybe a couple in the doors this bed uh has a few and then on the bottom right here is going to need some body work i don't know if i'll have him mess with that at all i'll see what he says about it if he can get it mostly straight and I just have to do just minor body work on it. That'd be a lot easier for me just because it is in this body line. And the dude I use is very, very good at, at what he does with a paintless dent repair. This side's pretty good. Obviously these two doors, the Bondo is completely falling out. You can see that's cracked out right there and that is completely falling apart. So I'm gonna have to strip all the Bondo out of these doors, try to get the metal pulled back out to where it should be and then we can go through and paint it. So my next step, I really wanna get this paint just done with and not have to worry about it. Also, I don't want to put my lift and wheels and tires and everything on. When the truck is so much taller, especially because I'm gonna be painting the roof, it's gonna be a lot easier to paint when it's not as tall. So that's why I kinda of wanna to get to work with the paint 
before I do the lift, wheels, tires, all that stuff. I guess we could start with some interior stuff, but we'll figure out a game plan and I want to get this thing done. I want to get it on the road. Just a little drive we did today kind of sparked me back up on this thing. It drives so good. It's got such good power and it needs like five, six, seven, maybe more pounds of boost. So it should run quite a bit better on 30 to 32 pounds. Either way, guys, that is enough talking. I'm going to end this video here. I really hope you enjoyed it. Go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.